Hello everybody, welcome back to the Zachary Daniels YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking the internals of this HP Pavilion, putting it into a Thermal Take Versa H15 case to be used as a NAS server. So we have EVGA 500W that we're going to be using as a power supply because I don't personally trust this old HP power supply to run 24-7. And we're going to have 4 terabytes in total of hard drive storage. Not here yet, but we're going to make a separate video about doing that and setting up true NAS on the on the server. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start by taking this panel off, which is already unscrewed. I didn't figure I should screw it down because I knew I would do this. Okay, so now we've got our Torx bit here. Let's screw this mother word. So we got all that unscrewed, so we're going to take the cables off. Get the USB 3.0 cable off, get all these static cables off. Take the motherboard out now, we got the, all the connectors off. Everything looks perfect. I'm gonna put it on this box. And then we gotta take this SSD out. We're gonna use it. It's an SK Hynix S31 Gold S31. Get a Phillips. This has Windows on it as it was gonna be resold on eBay. Take our SATA power and SATA off the SSD and set this aside. And lastly, we're going to take out the DVD drive. Probably make it an external DVD drive with an adapter. I've already unplugged it. I'm going to take this front off. And it slides right up. Now we're done with this case. Now we got the new case. We're going to take the, the thumb screws out. That's the back. But we also have to do that anyway, so that's fine. Take the front one off. There we go. Here we've got a manual. Looks like we've got, let's see, let's open this. We've got some zip ties. That's good. The manual. Uh, we've got a few brackets for drives. We've got screws. And some, but well, these are punch out. The expansion cards slots are punch out, unfortunately. Those ones suck. So, but we've got the P some PCIe covers. So once you do punch it out, you can put those in. So let's get the manual out. Now let's screw in the motherboard. And just before we do that, I'm going to make sure this fits. So I'll take this twisty tie out holding the cables. Alright, so it does fit. I'm going to put the standos on and then screw it in. Okay, so we got our standos on. I checked it does fit, so we're going to put our IO shield in. Screw it down. 
And her shield snaps right in. Look at it, motherboard. Don't touch it by anything else but the CPU code, because it isn't sensitive. Touch this cable so that way. There we go. Okay, so I fit it in. Now we're going to use the motherboard screws, which focuses look like that. They have a flat area around them, and they're Phillips. Fit. Sure fits. Perfect. Okay, now that we installed our motherboard, we're going to install the power supply using EVGA 500 watt power supply. Only 80 plus, just regular 80 plus white. Probably get a more efficient power supply later, but for now this will work fine. Probably like 80 plus gold. Drop it in. No, have our screws. So this is the other word screw. Has the flat area, it goes up a little bit, and it has Phillips. And it's relatively small. The power supply screw has a bigger Phillips head. It's all uh, base is also flat, but it's a bit more of a, a steep area. So that's a way to tell them apart. It's basically just a bigger version of the motherboard screw, but you don't want to use the motherboard screw for the power supply because it won't be big enough. I'm going to use the, the screws that came with the power supply, so they're exactly the same that came with the case. So we're going to take these out of the bag. So we're going to line up the holes on the power supply with the holes on the case. Alright, power supply is nice and snug in there. Pass the cables through. This is not a modular power supply, so it's not going to have any cables I can remove, but you're basically you just pass it through the hole on the bottom. Just hold down there. Pass the mirror. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our case fan. This one says sys fan. I'll use that. There's no sys fan one or sys fan two. It's just there's only one sys fan on here. So if you want to use two system fans uh, with an HP OEM motherboard, you're going to have to buy a splitter. Pretty cheap on Amazon, but it's pretty annoying to deal with. So my, while we're here, we'll do the front connectors. HP is a bit weird with the front connectors, but most of them are fairly the same. So we'll do the USB 3 header. We're going to do the HD audio connector. No, it's really simple. So you want to use the knocked up pin to find it where you should plug in the connector. Line that up. There we go. That's all in there. Now we got our front panel connectors. These are usually the hardest to work with. So you should consult your motherboard manual to figure out where the uh, front panel connectors are. Because I don't have a motherboard manual, manual because it comes with this computer, I'm going to be searching it on my laptop. So I looked up the chart for the front panel connector. It's on Intel's website. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to use this to plug in the front ca uh, panel connectors. So it goes on the top, it goes 246A on the bottom, 13579. And there's a knocked out pin where nothing goes. So we're going to put the hard drive. We'll start the hard drive activity light. And that's all pushed through. So let's pull this connector. Pull the excess back. Okay, so we're going to get our power supply connection plugged in. Okay, so we've installed our power our uh, power supply cables. Now we're going to start to install the SSD. It's the uh, SK Hynix uh, 500 gigabyte S31 gold. We're going to orientate it like this for this case. 
I can see the power and see the port on the pit facing the bottom. So we'll take our screws, which are the same as the motherboard screws, and put them through. Okay, so we have our SSD mounted. Now we have to plug it in. So we'll get our SATA power cable right here. Plug it in. That's it. And this comes and this cable has three different SATA power on it. So I'm using the back one and I'm gonna put the front two in the hard drive tray for later when we get to some hard drives. So I take my SATA cable, which didn't come with the case, I had one lying around. So I'm gonna put the L side in the other board instead. There we go. I clicked right in. Flip it around. And we'll plug this in. Doesn't matter which one you do. As long as it goes in. And there we go. So my last step is to cable manage. I'll come back to you when I'm done with it. Okay, so I have cable managed and this is the result. It's pretty good in the back, it's a bit messy, but you're not even gonna see the front either. It's not like it matters. Let's go and test it and see if it still turns on. Okay, so I have the computer plugged in. It's right here. Let's start. Would you look at that? First try. Oh, that's been the monitor. See, the mouse goes on. She got a Windows. Screen. Oh. Once the monitor switches sources. Rear chassis fan not detected. Hmm. Well it's on. So we can just dismiss that by pressing F1. We've got an HP logo. And we should be seeing Windows now. Yes! Did it! Made in. We don't have any internet, it's perfectly fine. Looking good, everything's looking perfect. Now I should test the um, USB. I should test the USB ports. All right, so we're gonna now we're gonna take this our mouse, move it to the USB 3.0 up here. And it's not working. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's fine. I can work that out later. Yeah. Although it does appear like our USB 3.0 header is installed. So that interesting. Yeah, I'm not totally sure why that's not working. Now it isn't a big deal because it's a server and I'm probably just going to use these back USB ports anyways. But you can see that's working perfectly fine. We got our back fan running even though it didn't detect the rear chassis fan for some reason. So you can see our power LED and our hard drive activity light are both working. That's cool. And that USB port isn't working, but that's not that big a deal. I can try that later. Let's try the reset button, just right here. Look at that. Restarted it. So it restarted. If the reset button works, the power button works. USB isn't working, which is fine. I know the USB 2.0 isn't working either. Let's try our speakers with the headphones. The headphone plug. 
Let's see if this works. Nice. Got audio. Not like it matters for a server, but it's good to know that it works. So there we have it. The HP Pavilion is all transferred into this case. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll pick up two NAS hard drives from Micro Center. Looking at two two terabyte NAS drives, probably in RAID zero. So that means there will be redundant and two exact copies of each other. That is the option, the RAID option with the less storage. However, that's the easiest and it requires the least amount of drives. And I think that would be perfect for my setup because this is just a NAS, which is network attached storage. So I can put any pictures on there that I want, any files that I want, and I can use it like a personal Google Drive. So I hope all of you enjoyed that video. It was a uh, bit different from my recent videos. Uh, I just had you know, Kitchen Nightmares video, it's a video with a compilation of sounds, and it was uh, a Boston Logan Airport swapping video, which I will be making more of later with this camera. I have not made spotting videos with this camera ever, so that would be great. And uh, look forward to seeing a video on this computer, on this continuation of this NAS project on my channel shortly. Apart from that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.